Hello boys and girls, welcome to John Robson Guitar Tuition. Once again, I do hope you're well. Now then, one of the big things that I find myself having to deal with in the guitar lessons that I do is strumming. Um, quite often people will come to me for lessons when they get stuck. They've got a guitar, they've maybe been shown a few chords by a friend who plays already and then they've been on to various websites, ultimateguitar.com springs to mind and they've looked at some of the chords for a song they want to play. The thing that they never ever get right, or very seldom get right under their own steam, is the strumming and that's because there is a real lack of information about how to strum when you are given the chords for a song. Let's take a look at what I mean. Uh, let's head on over to ultimateguitar.com and have a look for a song. Okay, as you can see, I've come to ultimateguitar.com and I've typed in Heroes, David Bowie. Um, quite a popular song. Lots of people seem to want to learn it and lots of people come to me uh, for guitar lessons who've learned the chords for the song but not how to strum it. So let's have a look at the kind of thing we see on ultimateguitar.com when we see the chords. Let's get rid of this little advert here. There it is. Um, looking at these chords, they do look pretty accurate, really. Ds and Gs and Cs, A minors and E minors. Um, but as is always the case with these um, online tab sites, you get absolutely no information whatsoever about the strumming pattern. This actually says here there is no strumming pattern for this song yet. Add it and get plus 5 IQ, whatever that means. Um, then you hear people talking about um, the strumming pattern for this song is down, down, up, up, down, up, and you know, that kind of thing, describing it as a string of downstrokes and upstrokes. Um, which is all really missing the point. Telling you how many down and up strokes there are in what order doesn't tell you anything about the rhythm of the song, which is what we're talking about here. And what you're going to see next is the kind of thing that I see in my guitar lessons all the time. People who've learned how to play the chords to a song and even got pretty good at the chord changes but they don't really have any idea of the rhythm that they're supposed to be playing. And now let's have a look at how it should be done. Right, so hopefully you could hear the difference between those two approaches. The first way sounded kind of a bit wooden and a bit um, jerky and not particularly pleasant. And the second way sounded quite fluent and flowing. Um, so how do you get from one to the other? How do you ensure that you are strumming a song with a sense of rhythm, essentially? Well, yes, there are issues about how to count the beats and you know how to understand rhythms and stuff, and we're going to come to those very shortly. But the main thing, the thing that will kind of make the biggest difference to your playing, is all about this arm. Okay, that's the correct kind of strumming motion that you're going for. Okay. Notice that the movement is coming from the elbow, not the wrist. Okay, And notice that my arm is nice and loose and floppy and relaxed. Okay, The moment you tense up, it's like trying to drive with the brakes on. It's just going to not work, basically. So, <coughs> it's all about keeping a constant, fluent, relaxed, down-up motion that is in time with the pulse of the music that you're playing to. And that's what we're going to look at right now. 
Okay, let's take a basic rhythm with four beats to the bar, where each beat is divided into two equal parts, labelled one and two and three and four, and as you can see here. This is how that would be counted. One and two and three and four and 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 and this is how you would strum that rhythm using down and up strokes. Now, hopefully you noticed that before I began playing in that little demonstration I did there, my arm was actually moving in sync with the beat of the music, so that when I did start strumming the chords, I was at the right speed and in sync with everything. That is why you have a counting on the beginning of a song. You should always use that opportunity at the beginning of a song when it's being counted off one, two, three, four, two, start your strumming motion so that you can come in absolutely perfectly in time. And once you've got this basic technique of the fluent, fluid, relaxed, constant strumming motion in sync with the beat, once you've got that mastered then that is strumming pretty much cracked because you can add all kinds of variations into the rhythm simply by missing some of the strokes. Here's what I mean. Here's the rhythm as it sounded uh, where I'm hitting all the beats, all the strokes rather. So you'd get kind of one and two and three and four and... Okay? Now, listen what a difference it makes if I miss the upstroke on the one. So that'd be the and of the one. So this would go one and two and three and four and... I can also miss downstrokes as well. Here's what it'd sound like if I missed the downstroke on the three. So that would be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. See what I mean? Let's put both of those together. So we get the upstroke on the one being missed and the downstroke on the three being missed. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And then going back to the original uh, rhythm where I was hitting all of the strokes. you can hear that it does make a big difference to the sound and you can come up with any variation you want in any combination of hit and missed strokes and another um, little trick you can do is to put muted strokes in as well all that is is where you come out with a chord shape and just do that so you might get something that sounds like this as a bit of an extreme example. This does tend to work a lot easier with bar chords, so that's how I'll show it in the next example. I'll play this a D chord again, but I'm going to play it as a bar chord. There it is. Um, so let's say I wanted to do some muted kind of strumming like that. I could create a very easy kind of ska type uh, rhythm, uh, ska reggae kind of thing, simply by muting the strings on all of the downstrokes. So this is without any muting. One and two and three and four and. And then if I mute all of the downstrokes, I would get two and three and four and two and three and four and. Like that. Doing it the opposite way around, you get a rhythm uh, which is um, pretty synonymous really with one particular track in my mind, the old Spencer Davis song, Keep On Running, where you hit all of the uh, downstrokes uh, and you mute all of the upstrokes, so that would be 
Give that a bit of speed and you get a typical kind of 60s kind of rhythm like that kind of thing and you can play around with all sorts of variations of um, muted and unmuted strokes like and missed strokes as well in there the possibilities are endless and what will happen is as you get more experienced at this you'll just gain a vocabulary of strumming rhythms that you feel comfortable using and that you can draw upon any time when you're playing a song you will get to the point where you don't even think about it it's just something that you naturally do but you have to have this basic foundation of a one and two and three and four and constant strumming motion underpinning it all and that has to feel natural before you can build anything else on that there really are no shortcuts to this uh, you do need to have that um, kind of technique nice and solid before you try and do anything a little bit more elaborate because if you try and short circuit it and do do a shortcut you're only going to come back to the same point later on when you kind of when you run into the same problems of a jerky sounding unconvincing rhythm that just doesn't sound too pleasant right i do hope that you found this instructive and informative and maybe it solved a problem or two for you um, if you would like some tailored one-to-one -one guitar tuition in any style whatsoever, uh, any level, level, beginner to advanced, then I do uh, Skype lessons, so you can contact me via the details at the end of this video. Or if you live on Teesside in the northeast of England, why not come along for a face-to-face -face lesson? Um, Either way, whether you choose to have a Skype lesson or a face-to-face, -face, then your first lesson is absolutely free. So you really have got nothing to lose. And at this moment in time, I'll just take um, a second to give a plug for my album, which is currently out on iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, all the usual places. It's called The Whiskey Made Me Do It. And you can find the links to listen to and or download the album uh, from my website which you'll see the address in the description below and also at the end of the video so that's it for today folks i hope you found this useful and i'll see you all next time bye for now